Thank you, Deborah. Um, wow. Um, I really, really appreciate that enormously. Um, it's great to be here with you um, and to share this experience. <clears throat> 51 weeks ago, Deborah, we had dinner in Chicago. You described to me a dream that the MacArthur Foundation had that involved a new award, a lot of money, a major marketing campaign, and as I recall, a big celebration. Your dream and the MacArthur Foundation's dream took us down the CDFI version of a yellow brick road with many important moments and a, and a series of exciting results. But one fleeting, forgettable incident along the way taught me something important and inspired this speech today. So over the next 30 or 40 minutes, I'm just warning you, I will explain what happened and what it meant to me. But let me first welcome everyone to Opportunity Finance Network's conference, Opportunity Next, see it, learn it, do it. This conference marks the official start of what we're calling the next phase of Opportunity Finance. Since 2004, we have grown, we have changed, and sadly, we have experienced some deaths, both organizational and personal. As we take stock of what happened and what we have done, we will take our first step together into the phase where grow, change, or die recedes. And in its place, and in this room today, is a new approach to opportunity finance. Let me also welcome you to Miami, since Miami is a next sort of place. We journey in our work to many important and interesting places. This September, the Opportunity Finance Network Board met on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation in South Dakota as guests of Elsie Meeks, Oista, and the Lakota Fund. It was a wonderful experience. We spent three days there, and it was a truly wonderful experience. And we visited with people who shared their dreams with us and taught us about the challenges that native CDFIs face. And I, at Pine Ridge, I learned that there's a native tradition to begin public statements by describing your lineage. Now, some of you heard something about my heritage a couple of years ago in Los Angeles and how it has shaped me and how it shaped my work. Today, I want to do something else. I want to introduce you to my parents who are here with us today, down front. It's probably enough in telling you about my lineage to say that my parents are good Jewish parents. That's probably all I need to say. You probably have heard something about Jewish DNA. But I have to tell you that last year at our conference in Washington, D.C., my mother got the thrill of a lifetime for any Jewish mother. Watching me stand next to Federal Reserve Chairman Bernanke following his speech, my mom leaned to the woman next to her and said with great pride, you see that man standing up, there next, standing up there with the Federal Reserve Chairman? You mean Mark Pinsky, the woman asked? Yes, my mother beamed. His sister is a doctor. <laughs> From the start today, I want to be clear when I'm, what I'm talking about when I speak about the challenge of next, which is what I'm going to focus on in my comments. I'm talking about how we can and must move our nation and our world to a more just place. I'm talking about what we must hold steady and what we must change so that our work, each transaction, each capital relationship, each policy we touch, bends the moral arc of the universe toward justice. That and nothing less than that is what we are working for. What can and should change versus what must never change. Values in contrast to activities. Opportunity Finance Network strategy, our industry's future, rests on who we are, more specifically on who you are. Last week, I read in the New York Times a quote from a student who was leading a green automobile design competition because he was tired of waiting for uh, more green automobiles. And you may have seen the article, too. The student said, and this stuck with me, 
We are the people we have been waiting for. Many of us use the phrase CDFI DNA to describe an intangible, unique quality that sets us apart. Particularly now, as we juggle changes in how we work, in the economy, in policy, and in our partners, I feel the need to, I feel the need to do more than just describe us. I want to get at what's inside CDFI DNA. If we are the people we've been waiting for, I want to know how CDFI de DNA defines who we are. When we are clear about what we stand for, what we stand against, and what values define our decisions, our opportunities grow. That is the gist of OFN's core purpose, core values, and vision. And when our choices and our tactics express who we are, our decisions leverage our power to produce change. That is the meaning of the six ambitious goals that we set and committed ourselves to in our Grow, Change, or Die strategy, and that we work toward every day. Our lead strategic goal is not just to create a high volume financing system that results in more money on the street. It is to help create a high volume financing system that benefits millions of low income and low wealth people. What does that say about who we are? Our vision is a world where all people have the resources and the opportunity to act in the best interest of their communities, themselves, and future generations. Our strategy rests on aligning capital with social, economic, and political justice, our core purpose, the reason we exist. It's framed by our core values of excellence and justice. Excellence because the people we serve have a right to respect the same quality of service as all other people. Justice because it is fundamental to the health of our communities, our society, our policies, our economy, and our nation. Justice is our unifying force. The prophet Isaiah did not accept the conventional thinking of his time that without God there is no justice. Isaiah believed there was more, that without justice there can be no God. And Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. refused more than 40 years ago to believe that the vaults of justice are bankrupt in the United States. Justice is our unifying force. <clears throat> Capitalism without justice is just not sustainable. This year, we saw the corrosive effect of capitalism without justice and the economic mess that grew out of greed and irresponsibility in the mortgage business. If there's a single lesson we can take away from the quagmire, it should be this. The current global economic mess is not the result of bad borrowers. It is the result of bad lenders. And a tsunami of bad judgments up and down the financial and policy food chain that supported bad lending. We know the difference between bad lending and We know the difference between bad lending and good lending. That is why we can and must play a leadership role in imbuing justice as we know it in our work into the economic and political system that we work in. We are the people we have been waiting for. <clears throat> as it happens, the next era of opportunity finance will be part of the next era of finance in general. Global and domestic credit systems, economies, and policies are navigating uncharted waters right now and many rules are changing or will change. Opportunity Finance Next is emerging just as the fundamentals of our financial systems are in flux as they have not been for many decades. We are seeing a back-to-basics reconfiguration of capital market behavior, credit distribution systems, credit risk perceptions and realities, rating systems, government policies, and other elements of the world in which we function every day. We are living and we are working in a transformational time. We can sit by the side to see what happens, or we can leverage our experience, our expertise, our standing, and our credibility to use this opportunity to bend the moral arc of the universe toward justice. 